metric allows you to track and chart various events in real time, such as user activity in a Rails application. The interface is quite clean, allowing you to easily browse the charts. In this episode, I'll show you the basics of getting this set up and how to integrate it with a Rails app. Let's get started. Now, Fenord metric stores its events using Redis, so you'll first need to install that. I'll use Homebrew here to install it. There we go, now I can start it up manually using this command. Now that we have Redis up and running, let's set up Fenord metric using an example provided in the README. Unfortunately, I have some trouble with the simple example out of the box. However, the full example provided here is a good showcase of what Fenord metric is capable of. So I'll make a new file here, I'll just call it fullexample.rb. And then I'll just paste in the example code provided by the README. Let's try running this. First, I'll need to run gem install Fenord metric, and then I can start it up by calling Ruby and passing in that full example script. You can see that this is now listening on a couple of different ports. Uh, 4242 is the web application, and 2323 is where you can post new events. So I'll try visiting localhost uh, port 4242 to get the web application, and there we go. So this is showing me charts for various events, and it's just filling in this data from the script, and you can see it updates in real time. And there are various other gauges and stuff you can browse through here to see uh, various distributions, and, and you can see uh, what keywords are searched and most popular, and so on. Now, if we take a look back at the full example script, you can see that there is a DSL provided for defining the gauges which appear in the user interface. And uh, you can make an event call and pass in a block, which will listen to that event and then affect the gauges as instructed in the block. And then near the bottom of the script, we can see how it's populating the events right here is creating a new uh, Fnord metric API and then uh, calling event on this and passing on a specific type and then whatever other attributes it wants to send along with the event. So this is just looping through and triggering these events at random intervals, which is generating the data which you saw in the charts. Now that you understand the basics of Fnord metric, let's take a look at how to integrate this into a Rails app. So here's the app, which contains a list of products. And what I want to track is when a user visits a single product. When this happens, I'll uh, send an event to Fenord metric, and then I can chart that information in various ways. The first thing I'll do is go into the gem file for this application and add in the gem for Fenord metric. And of course, you run the bundle command to install it. Next, I'll go into the config initializers directory and create a new file in here for setting up Fenord metric.rb. So in here, I'll instantiate a new Fenord metric API object, and let's assign this to a constant, so that way I'll be able to access this anywhere throughout the Rails application. Now be aware that this is opening a new connection to the Redis database, and it will insert events directly into there. So that's more efficient than going through the open port, which is another way to add events through Fenord. Next, I want to trigger an event inside of the products controller show action, which is the page I showed you earlier. And the way we do this is just call Fenord metric and then call event on this. And then we can pass in whatever parameters we want into here, such as the products attributes. Now it's also important to pass in the underscore uh, type parameter. So that way we can give this uh, event a name. So let's call it view product. So with that set up, now whenever I visit a product, it's going to add an event to Redis. Now I just need to set up a Fenord app to listen to this event and adjust any of the gauges. So I'll just make the script at the root of my application. I'll just call it a Fenord metric app.rb. And then I'll paste in some boilerplate code to get us started. So I'm just requiring Fenord metric here and then defining a namespace called store, which is the application. And this is where I can define any gauges. And then I'm starting up the worker and the web. And notice I'm not starting an acceptor because uh, I can define uh, events and add them directly into Redis. Now there are several types of gauges which are provided. Uh, the first I'll show you here is called a top list gauge, and this will allow us to list out the popular products. And I'll give this a title of popular products. And then next I need to make a new event listener. So I'll listen to the uh, view product event and then pass in a block. Now I can instruct this event to observe the popular products gauge we just set up, and then uh, tell it to use the name of the product in the list. So this data hash is what we sent in through the Rails application when we triggered this event. All right, now I can start up that Fenord metric app, and this will launch it on port 4242. 
And when I visit that, I get this blank page and it's currently on this active users section, which I believe primarily just shows you the events that have come in, but no events have come in at the moment. And if I check out the popular products gauge I set up, you can see this will list out the products that have been visited, but currently nothing is here. Now off camera, I went to a product in the Rails app, so let me try refreshing this, and there's the product. And I just visited several other products as well, and then refreshing this shows them all listed here, with the most visited at the top. Now manually triggering each one of these events is sort of a pain, so you might want to set up a rake task which will automatically do this and simulate real world activity. Now before I do that, I'm going to move this Fenord metric event trigger from the controller into the model, so that way it will clean up the controller a bit more, and that way we can trigger it from a rake task as well. So I'll make a method called trigger view event, and then going into the product model, I'll define that method, trigger view event, and then paste in that same content, and adjust it here slightly because we're currently in this instance. All right, now I can make a rake task for populating these events. I'll do that inside of the lib tasks directory, make a new file here. Uh, let's call it fenordmetric.rake. And I'll paste in the code for this. It's quite simple, I just make a fenordmetric populate task, which loves in the Rails environment, and then it fetches all the products and just uh, randomly uh, triggers the view event for that product and sleeps a random amount of time between zero and one seconds. So let's try this out. When I trigger that rake task, it's going to run continuously in the background and populate the events. And now as I refresh this page, I see a lot more samples coming in here, and the uh, list will adjust as well, and show me which products are currently going up or down. Pretty cool. Next, let's add another gauge to see which product price ranges are most popular. So I'm going to paste in a distribution gauge here uh, called popular prices, and uh, supply a range of values which will determine how the bar graph is displayed. Now I need to observe this one as well, so I'll add a new observe call here for the product prices gauge and use the price data for that graph. Now while we're here, I'm also going to add a call to the top to hide active users. So what this will do is remove that active users menu option on the left because that page isn't all that useful, at least at the moment. Now you'll need to restart this app each time you make a change, and then once you do and visit it, we can see that there is a popular prices gauge, and visiting that will show us a bar graph of distributing the prices based on which ones are most visited. But keep in mind that this is going to weight a little differently depending on how many products are in each price range. Now I want to show you one more gauge, so I'm going to paste this one in as well. So this is uh, just going to do a generic gauge call, and it's uh, for making a product views per second gauge, and I'm setting the tick to one second. So when you're doing a generic gauge call, you usually supply a widget option as well, which will define how that gauge is displayed. And notice this allows me to do auto updating for that, which is quite nice. Now I do want to adjust this gauge whenever I receive a view product event, I'll just tell it to increment that gauge when that happens. So now when I restart the app and visit it, it's showing me the product views uh, widget, which I defined and has this graph here, which auto updates for each uh, hit that's coming in to the products. And you can see the activity live right here. Really cool. Well, that's it for this brief look at Fenord Metric. If you want to track events in your Rails application, definitely check it out. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find a whole lot of documentation on this gem yet. Probably the best source is just the full example that's provided down here. But I expect, I expect that it will be improved later on. Maybe we can get a full wiki of documentation up soon. Also, if you're deploying this to production, you're currently on your own on how best to do that. Uh, there's some solutions on embedding this into a Rails application, but I think it's best to run it as a separate process. This way you ensure there's only one instance running, and you can easily manage the memory that way. Well, that's all I have for this episode, uh, but a quick reminder before I go, in case you missed the announcement, uh, starting this week I'm switching to two episodes per week, and this means that uh, free episodes will be every other week. If you have any questions or comments on that, please feel free to email me at ryan at railscast.com. In the pro episode this week, I show you how to create template handlers in Rails. It's surprising how making something as simple as a Ruby template can really bring a lot of power and flexibility to your views. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous pro and revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro, and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.